Welcome back, Everyday Business Leaders. I'm Melanie Ake, your host for today's show, coming to you from JP the Geek Studio right here in Greenwood. We're thrilled to have you with us today. We are celebrating and connecting remarkable business leaders in our very own community. They're actually redefining the way we think and grow about many things. Today, we're going to be talking to Justin Kenny, the Director of Security and Compliance here at JP the Geek Studio. Now, remember, before we get started, subscribe to our channel and turn on those notifications so you never miss an episode. Justin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. I am so happy to be here and kind of share these thoughts and ideas with you. This is wonderful. You're just down the hallway, actually. Yeah, just just a, a stone's throw away. It's not that far. It's great. It's great. I love this because a, a lot of women that are following this show came to our Top 4 Women event in October, mm-hmm. and you were the presenter for the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. That's a pretty big thing, right? It's a pretty big thing. It's a, it's, um, I would say in my world, the biggest holiday, you know, and it's been going on for, um, around two decades now. So since the uh, early 2000s, you know, when cyber threats and attacks really started to, uh, to really take off, um, the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency and, you know, in with the help of the executive branch, uh, came out with the Cybersecurity Awareness Month to really help uh, spread that awareness to people who might not normally think about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think here it is, 2023, and I remember Windows 95, and it was called Windows 95 because that's really when the computer started to come out. That has not been that long ago. No, no, it has not, and, you know, Things, you know, as you know, obviously change very, very rapidly. Um, and that's what we're seeing, in, you know, it, not only in the tech industry, but in all industries. You know, technology is really flourishing and really helping um, add productivity and add, um, <clears throat> add revenue streams in, into more businesses. But what most people don't understand is any time that you have something or multiple things connected to the Internet, it's, it's a way in. It's a way in. And so many people now are talking about these cyber attacks, whether you're an independent business owner or whether you have 10,000 employees at your company. It just, once they get in, that's the hack, right? That's the hack. That's that's part of it. So it it, kind of goes in two parts. So there's the hack, well, there's the compromise, and then there's the breach. Um, And most people will say that the breach comes before the compromise, but it's actually the other way around. So to compromise is once they get into the system. So they could compromise your email account and they can just sit and watch. Um, but once they see something that they're not supposed to or once they access something that they're not supposed to, that's the breach. That's the Both are really bad, but that's when things really start to go downhill really quickly. Those are those emails that you go, that doesn't look right, but you accidentally click that on. You accidentally click the link, open up the attachment. It, it, you know, and nowadays, depending on uh, what type of agency you're in, you know, for government and journalists and stuff like that, we're seeing a lot of um, malware that you don't need to click on anything. You just open up the email and you, it's done. You're already compromised. So what happens? It's kind of like a spider, right? We talked about spooky tales from the dark web, mm-hmm. but that's what it feels like because you go, oh, well, it's okay if I'm in a company. And I know a lot of companies have the compliance training now because if one person does it in a company, and even if they're on a network, it immediately spreads to everybody else. Yeah, no. So there, it, it kind of once once that person clicks, once that software or malicious software malware you know actually executes on the device yet that's when things really start to go down the hill really quickly um and yeah if you're on you know a company network if you're you know even at um, starbucks or you know somewhere where that has a public wi-fi if the type of virus that was installed in your computer um propagates or spreads across the network it will infect every computer that's on that same on the same network and that's why you know when talking to business owners and executives, one of the best things I tell them is to uh, segregate your network. 
you know, have it to where your servers aren't talking to the normal everyday computers that people are using because the servers is what mostly has a lot of that sensitive information on it. So if we can block that malware from getting to those servers and getting to that sensitive information, it'll save a lot of hardship and a lot of money in the oh long run. Oh my gosh, that's a great tip. So if I am a business owner and I go to Starbucks mm-hmm. and I, I may use their public software, but I should be on my VPN, right? Yeah, definitely. You, definitely. Anytime that you're in a public setting, um, if your company provides it or you have a personal one like Nord VPN, um, not sponsored or anything, uh, <laughs> uh, but if they want to sponsor me, hey, I <laughs> won't, won't complain. But, you know, using some sort of public VPN to where, you know, it, it masks who you are, what information that you're sending to where, you know, somebody is, you know, on that Starbucks Wi-Fi just watching the traffic going through. They're not going to know who you are, what, what the information is that you're sharing, um, even if it is sensitive Mm -hmm. it's so hard nowadays because even mcdonald's right if people are going in as business owners real quick grabbing lunch and saying i'll just sign on wi-fi and grab my email and so that's an opportunity for that that to come in i want to go over i love (laughs) these little brochures that you guys have here in the in the building uh, but they go over some of the things that people may not be aware of some of the terminology so Mm -hmm. Can we play a little uh, in a game right here yeah, and talk yeah. about some of these? Uh, because, you know, when I grew up, I lived on my grandparents' lake during the summer, and I loved to fish. Mm-hmm. So I'd go down all day with a maybe a, a loaf of bread and just catch catfish, and it was really fun. But it, this is different fishing, right? It is completely <laughs> different. Now, I love fishing, too. Not that fishing. I do want to do wanna point out, um, you know, I love fishing. Fishing for actual fish like catfish, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, that fishing is completely different. So in, in, it goes into very, very different forms, and we're starting to see more, more and more here recently. Um, I think it was between uh, 2022 and 2023, there was an increase of 42 percent in fishing attacks. And what most people don't understand when it comes to fishing is 90 percent of all attacks start with an email. Starts with that fish. Um, the MGM Casino attack that happened uh, early October, or late September, early October, um, that was caused by phishing or a voice phishing or phishing over the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and what had happened was, you know, somebody, you know, going to talk about social media, you know, along with this, people like to put a lot of information on social social media it's no, it's natural really? <laughs> i i wish it wasn't that way but people do um but and you know business pages right so let's talk about facebook business pages because that's the way a lot of people communicate or try to get their business mm-hmm. or on linkedin and so right social media is a huge or instagram now has the instacarts and things yep. that you want to use but that's not always necessarily the safest route right that and is so correct you are totally on target with who our audience is so talk to us about how do we protect ourselves? Yeah. So the main thing you really need to think about when putting stuff on social media is how can this be used against me? Because when spear phishing attacks, when they take targeted targeted information used against you, that's where they get it from. They get it from the Facebook, the Instagram, the LinkedIn, um, the MGM casino attack. They, uh, the attackers, um, they scraped LinkedIn. So they went to the MGM casino LinkedIn page and got all of their employees or all the employees as you know you, uh, people list uh, on LinkedIn, right? Because it tells you like yep. this, you're an employee of this company. Yep, I can go to um, you know if you guys have a um, a LinkedIn page. If I go to Everyday Leaders, go to People, it'll show me everybody who is associated with that company. Mm-hmm. Um, so and that's what the attackers did. They got that list and they were going off of people who might have the highest privileges out of any normal employee um and they called the help desk and i'll say hey i'm this employee i lost my password can you help me reset it and they were so nice they reset the password and the mfa for them without any sort of verification so and that's what led to that 15 million dollar breach was just one phone call and a linkedin search wow pretty easy to do right Mm -hmm. i mean because we're all susceptible we're all vulnerable to it and, and every right, because we're just trying to do the right thing sometimes. Yep. But talk to me. I know when you were presenting um, for our top floor women group, 
you were giving some really big numbers about how people can, you know, what happens next. So to a company that has one small breach, there's a big fine. That there could be, so depending on the type of uh, type of company and what industry they're in, there could be multiple different fines. So, you know, when it comes to the healthcare industry, when it comes to any sort of uh, financial company, each one of those have a regulatory body that, you know, provides rules that they must follow, um, you know, with the medical industry is HIPAA, which you probably, you know, are mm-hmm. very uh, fluent in. And mm-hmm. then, you know, with the f- financials, it's uh, the um, the FTC safeguard rules. It's uh, the PCI DSS, which is, you know, they manage the payment card information that gets transmitted. Um, so if you're, if, if you're an organization that has to abide by these rules and you don't do anything to put those controls in place and there is a breach caused by that um during the investigation once you call out to your insurance provider your cyber insurance provider and they bring in forensic experts and they see exactly how the attackers got in um and it comes out that you guys weren't doing your due diligence to protecting your client information that's when those fines are levied and you know for the ftc safeguard rules for you know cpa firms and real estate agencies um one so not implementing one control, that's a $100,000 fine. Wow, $100,000, one fine. One fine, and uh, there's no, there's nine general rules in the FTC safeguard rules, so in total, the organization could face up to oh $900,000 on top of you know what you're having to pay for the breach and what you're having to pay for the incident response labor because we're not free and we're not cheap, right? And... Um, <clears throat> On top of that, there is the um, the notification. So, if anybody's personal information was leaked in any sort of way or uh, viewed by an unauthorized party, mm-hmm. that organization has to alert them within a certain amount of time and with speed costs. You know, mm-hmm. you know. well, we've all had that, right? We all get those notifications, um, an, a mail. You know, something we get in the mail, we open it up and say, "This company was breached," and so whatever the steps are next. Here's the real issue is you don't know it until it's almost too late. It's happened. And then you say, great, it may have been a news story. It may have been in the newspaper. However, I'm vulnerable, right? So what can I do if I'm working at a company or, or just for myself as a small business owner? Yeah. What's the best thing to protect my information? So there's a couple of things to really um, – protect your information. Now, one thing that we do at JP the Geek and for all of our clients is we build um, a, uh, we implement a program called Defense in Depth. So that's a layered security approach. Think of like an onion. So you have the core and then we just build on layer after layer after layer. And, you know, we do this for businesses, but you can do this as, you know, a one man show. If you're just a sole proprietor, even just as a consumer as a person um and the first thing would be to use a strong password now people when i say this they lose their mind they're like what do you mean a strong password well well it tells us that our computers that's too weak or that's too strong mm -hmm. and you know a lot of the software and tools they use old configurations so you know most platforms right now say the minimum password that you should have is an eight character password well what most people don't understand is that eight character password can be cracked in less than a day now even even if you use uppercase lowercase special characters if it's eight characters it'll in in a day or two with the current computer power it'll be done done for it gone and you know with that password, you lose everything. You know, in in the top four you know, women, when I'm speaking to them, one line that I said, which I love using, is, you know, you wouldn't use one key for your house, your car. Wouldn't that be nice, though? <laughs> it would be so convenient. But what happens when you lose it, or somebody steals it, mm-hmm. or makes a copy of it? You lose everything. You could even lose access to everything. They could go in, open the door, change the lock on you, and now the key that you have doesn't work. So using a strong password and for some guidelines going off the Center for um, Internet Security or CIS, um, they recommend a 14-character password. Now, I know that can be pretty daunting when thinking about it, but using things like colors, nouns, um, colors, nouns, 
animals even so like one thing that uh i tell some people is you know pick a a noun a color an action and like one of your favorite things add a couple of n- numbers and sp- sort of special characters like a pound and a money sign and you got yourself a pretty strong password that will meet that 14 character complexity or one thing i tell people use a sentence they're super easy to remember you know I love using strong passwords. Twenty three, you know, pound pound money. Don't use that. Don't 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 actually use that. No, please no. Um, but you know, as an example, that would be a you know a, a strong password. You're and taking me back to typing class. The quick brown fox jumped over the moon. Yeah, stuff like that. You know, and you know what most people don't understand is in the cybersecurity industry we have lists and lists and lists of passwords that people have used because uh, one thing that most people don't understand is when your information gets breached or leaked at one of these you know large companies um like the linkedin breached or the twitter it gets leaked on the dark web Mm -hmm. to be sold and so security researchers and uh security enthusiasts even security operators like myself will go in and build lists based off these leaked passwords because one thing that most people realize but don't say publicly is a lot of people reuse the same password. According to the American Lung Association, breathing problems are most common from indoor environments, including new or older structures. Who do you know experiencing migraines, sinusitis, asthma, allergies, COPD, pneumonia, bronchitis, fatigue, even snoring? Yes, snoring or allergic to their pet's dander. Yes, breathing problems can be minimized very effectively and inexpensively. Call Mary O'Farrell, Mary's House of Healthy Living, 812-787-2071. Call right away to assess your indoor breathing environment. Hi, this is Melanie Ake. When you visit everydayleaders.com, you'll find valuable resources to become a better leader in your life. Women's leadership programs, including Top Floor Women, our monthly networking events, corporate workshops, and strategic business coaching services. Discover classes and products to develop yourself, including our morning leadership devotionals. Don't forget, order one of my inspirational books, sign up for classes, or pick up some gear in the leader store. Listen to the Everyday Business Leaders podcast, apply to be a guest in our studio, or even sponsor your own commercial advertisement. Contact us today at everydayleaders.com. So I have to ask you real quick because yep. there's a lot of computers now. People are in the season for buying presents. You know, we're getting into the holiday season. So they get a new computer and it says the key, um, I forget what it is now, the keychain that mm-hmm. keeps all of your passwords intact on Google or on Google Chrome. What's your opinion about how we should manage these? Yes. So that is a very, a very good question. Um, because, you know, with a strong password, you need a strong defense for that password. And that strong defense is securing it in a safe location, not on a sticky note under your keyboard or in your drawer or under your desk. Uh, because, you know, m- most people don't understand is like when on engagement. So like if I'm going through and I'm doing an audit at a client, we look at all those locations. We look under keyboards. We look on uh, or an Excel on sticky notes on your computer. <laughs> That's <laughs> password protected by a very insecure password, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to saving those passwords, the best thing you can do is use a password manager. Now, Google came out with a password manager, but the one that comes default on most browsers don't properly keep that information safe. Mm-hmm. So on, I do want to point out. The keychain on iOS and Mac products, that is a really good password manager. But if you're not using that, let's say you're on just Chrome, right? You're you're on Chrome, you're on Firefox, you're on Edge, and you're browsing, and you're signing to Facebook, right? Or you're signing to your bank account. Mm-hmm. And Google is like, oh, do you want us to save, uh, do you want us to save that password for you? And you're like, psh. That'd be so convenient. Thank you so much. I'm on there every day. Yes, it'd be convenient. Right? right? I don't have to type it in. I don't have to, you know, memorize it now. Just out of sight, out of mind. It just fills it in for me. But what you, what I don't understand in that moment is, yes, it's saved in Google encrypted, but it's also saved locally on your computer in a file, in your file browser. 
unencrypted in plain text. So, you know, why I bring that up is, you know, I know where that folder is. My security analyst know where that file is. Mm -hmm. The software that we do our audit knows exactly where that file is. So if I know where that file is, the attackers know exactly where that file is. So they are building what's called info stealers or malware specifically designed to steal information off your computer. They point this this malware directly to that file because, you know, people always, you know, for convenience, will save those passwords in there. Mm-hmm. Um, when doing cybersecurity risk assessments for clients, we, uh, we show them this. So during our CSRAs, uh, our tool finds and gets all these passwords, right? Um, They're probably like, what? <laughs> yeah, like, well, uh, I will, you know, I'll be getting the presentation together and I'll be I'll be going through, like, okay, so what's a juicy password? So I'll get some, like, some Huntington passwords or I'll get some Bank of America or um, people will save their, like, their work office 365 credentials in there. So I'll grab that because once I get that, it's game over mm-hmm. for that account, right? Um, so I'll bring that up and I'll show them and, like, their draw hits the four. Every time, because like they don't they don't understand because m- most people think that these browsers these computers are inherently safe. Mm-hmm. When nowadays, yes, we are trying to build software and hardware and computers that are safe out of the box. But before, this is something that we didn't think about as mm-hmm. a society, as a community, you know, even as an organization. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so you know, moving forward, you know, ensuring that. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> you're fine. complete brain fart there. Uh, <laughs> ensuring that uh, you know you're not saving those passwords in in the in those browsers, but in a password manager like LastPass, OnePass, Dashlane. These are all really good um, password managers that will encrypt your that data no matter what. It doesn't get saved on your device locally in clear text. No matter what, no matter where you're at, it's encrypted. Um, and then with those, with password managers, you know, please, please, please use them. But when you're creating your account, you know, the one thing that encrypts all your data is your master password. If you have a weak password for your master password, it will most likely get breached. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I hate to They're say it. they find everything else if they get in yeah. that one password. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so LastPass recently, you know, late last year in October, had a breach where client vaults were stolen. LastPass sent out a notification like, hey, if you have a strong master password, you should be just fine. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a strong master password, if it was less than 12 characters long, I would go through and change all the passwords that are in your vault because most likely these, you know, the attackers are still trying to get into those vaults that they had stolen. So, you know, if you had a weak password, it's already most likely compromised. And it's, those passwords are already probably be being used in the wild to try and get into those accounts. So if you don't have multi-factor authentication turned on and you didn't have a strong master password, you... Um, Things might be not looking so hot there. Uh, <laughs> Don't want to leave this conversation without sharing about what you're what you're getting ready to launch for your own business. Yes, because <laughs> it's been really exciting watching you. It's so, it's been really exciting working on it. It gives you kind of a, an outlet too, right? Because mm-hmm. you have a lot of responsibility here. But what's happening behind the scenes in Justin's life? Yes, so there's um, one you know one thing I've been really working on the past couple of months, and that's uh, uh, I'm gonna call it a brand called Hacker Threads, H A C K E R, you know Threads, T H R E D Z. It has a Z there at the end. Uh-huh. dot com, um, and what you know Hacker Threads is really trying to incorporate and really trying to promote is cybersecurity awareness just outside of the work environment you know you you know you heard us talk about cybersecurity awareness training a lot of times that's for your organization to give to your employees but you know cyber attacks happen to consumers it happens to you it happens to you know grandparents mm-hmm. and parents and brothers and sisters it's not just your coworkers it's us as a community as a society 
And by 2025, we're looking to lose over uh, things like over $5 trillion annually wow. to cyber attacks. And not all that is against businesses. Um, so one thing that Hacker Threads is trying to do is we're trying to promote cybersecurity awareness tips and tricks and ideas through clothing and apparel. And uh, so, you know, um, if you go to HackerThreads.com, you'll definitely uh, see uh, our selection on there. We've start we've got like five shirts, three sweatshirts, uh, a couple of notebooks, and uh, here soon. So right now we're doing a soft launch. Um, so the soft launch will end uh, at the end of d- December mm-hmm. um, with a limited selection. Right now I'm getting some more uh, some more ideas uh, up and posted, but not you know officially out there yet. So if you know if you definitely want to stay um, up to date with what we're doing, what what we're designing, follow us on LinkedIn mm-hmm. Hacker Threads. Uh, you can also follow me, Justin Kenny. Uh, but you know my biggest goal for Hacker Threads is to really help spread the cybersecurity. Well, awareness outside of the work environment Mm -hmm. you know as i you know being a cybersecurity professional i go to a lot of conferences right and we get a lot of cool swag (laughs) t-shirts and stuff like that and as i'm going through the store as i'm you know in the checkout line if i'm at a restaurant people ask me all the time what what my shirt's talking about and i love explaining explaining it to them the one thing i love about being in cybersecurity is that it's all education Education centric, you it's know, sharing. Secret. People go, what's in there? Right? Yeah, you know, it's it's this m- uh, mythical industry that everybody just it's it's intriguing. Mm-hmm. Um, so people always ask, and I'm really hoping to you know if we get these sh- you know shirts out there, if 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 more people are you know sharing this idea that you know we can be safe as society, a society, and that we all have a, a job to do in cybersecurity. Maybe that can, you know, change people's, you know, outlooks on cybersecurity because right now, you know, like I said earlier, 13% of people use the same password across everything. Mm -hmm. One in three people, you know, one in three employees never or rarely thinks about cybersecurity at work. And if they don't think about it at work, I can guarantee they're not thinking about it at home. Yeah, we need to change that conversation, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing I'm really, really hoping to do with Hacker Threads is really you know, open up that conversation because it's a conversation that we need to have. It's, it's a tough one and we need to have those tough conversations uh. because it's, it's not an if, it's a when. Mm. When will you be compromised? And if we can put the controls in place, if we can raise awareness around cybersecurity, hopefully, you know, by 2025, we won't be at $5 trillion lost. We'll be, you know, hopefully lower than what we are at today. Mm. You know, we as a society, you know, it's not just the cybersecurity cybersecurity professionals that are here to keep us safe we all access email we all are on social media we all have a duty to protect our data you know the data that we store the data that people entrust you know entrust us with we have a duty to protect that and mm-hmm. no one's left behind right no no one's left behind and you know the one thing i really want to stress that is that again cybersecurity is everybody's job you know, even just as the industry itself, we are we're at a million dollar gap between what we the jobs that are open and the, and the operators that we need mm. to fill them. I think uh, by 2024, it's like 3.4 million cyber jobs are going to be open without anybody to fill. Wow. So people need to start studying if that's something kids today. Right. I know that they're probably encouraged a lot. Like if you want to be a coder, if you want to get into this industry, it's a really big opportunity. It, it, it definitely is. Um, it definitely, there are a lot more platforms and programs out there to kind of help, sh- you know, raise that awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, one thing, too, is, is it's not just the kids because, you know, kids hopefully, I'm, I'm really hoping that school is here soon, really start implementing more cybersecurity awareness training. And if not, I would love to help schools if they ah, want to kind of help uh, uh, build a curriculum or um, some sort of training around that because, you know, our the kids are the future, uh, but we also need to protect, you know, things now. So mm-hmm. helping, you know, spread that awareness is, you know, one thing I really enjoy doing. You are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's been so much fun getting to know you, and I am really excited about all the things that you're doing, especially the clothing design. The education, I think, is the big piece for our community because 
there may be a lot of systems out there and you know people can go to their own companies and say they can protect you but i think what you've brought to us is it's after you leave work it's always with you it's the phone that you carry it's the computer that you sign into it's the public wi-fi's like thinking about all these things i hope everybody's going to get your journal back out go listen to this again and really understand what makes you vulnerable right yep so Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. I love sharing these uh, these tips, tricks, ideas, and just having this conversation. You know, one thing I really want to you know ensure that you know the um, you know our guests really hear is you know really use strong passwords, fourteen characters at a minimum that'll keep your account safe on on the front side, on the back side. Turn on your multi-factor authentication. You know, go to hackerthreads.com. You know, buy our, buy the turn on your MFA sweatshirt. Really spread that. You know, spread that love too, because everybody needs to have it on. It's like I said, it's the vegetable of cybersecurity. Everybody needs it, but nobody wants it. Ugh. Um, and <clears throat> you know, keeping those passwords safe in a password manager, not Chrome, not Edge, not Firefox, not JPDT. locally on your computer. <laughs> you know, if you're a business and you want to, you know. Uh, if you really want to bring your organization's security posture under control, or if you know, if you don't know where you're at, come to us. We'll definitely do a cybersecurity risk assessment, really show you where those vulnerabilities are. But you know, to all of our guests, yeah, just make sure your passwords are strong. You use MFA, and uh, you store them in a very secure location because if if lost, that data, that information is lost. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, I'm scared now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's things that we need to be aware of. And this time of the year, I love having you on this program right now because we're getting ready for the biggest holiday season of the year and yep. Black Friday's coming. So um, thank you very much for keeping us educated. No problem. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So this has been a great show. I think, as we know, right, everything that we do matters and everything that we make a decision on affects everybody else in our life. So thank you for joining us with the Everyday Business Leaders platform today. I hope you were inspired. I hope you thought about something differently. I hope you're going to change your business in one way, especially when it comes to cybersecurity. Remember, the journey of growth and innovation, it never ends. Things like what we're bringing to you today and other stories are insights from our local community. So stay tuned for more episodes filled with wisdom, innovation, and inspiration. This is Melanie Ake signing off from JP the Geek Studio, where better IT service is just a call away. And Justin told me they say own it, secure it, and protect it. (laughs) Until next time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn those notifications on. Remember, Everyday Leaders helps you to develop strategies to become a better leader in your life every day. It's not what you do in a day. It's what you do every day that makes the most impact. Thanks for joining us.